London, a city of over 8 million people, is built around one of the world's most iconic rivers, the Thames. For centuries, this river has been a source of life, trade, and culture. But for decades, it's been facing a silent crisis. Every year, millions of tons of raw sewage spill into the Thames, threatening wildlife, public health, and the environment. A problem rooted in a 150-year-old system designed for a city half its current size. By 2005, studies confirmed the river's ecological collapse. With oxygen levels so low, fish couldn't survive. So how do you fix a problem this big? Well, London's answer is bold. A 25-kilometer-long tunnel running up to 70 meters deep beneath the city. A project so ambitious, it's been nicknamed the Super Sewer. Today, we're breaking it all down, why it's needed, how it works, and what it means for the future of London. To understand why London needs this massive tunnel today, we need to rewind to the mid-19th century. In the early 19th century, London was rapidly growing. Its population exploded from 1 million in 1800 to over 2.5 million by 1850. But this growth came with a major problem, waste management. At the time, there was no proper sewage system. Human waste often ended up in cesspools or was dumped directly into the streets and rivers. The River Thames became a dumping ground for both human and industrial waste, turning it into what many called an open sewer. This unsanitary situation led to devastating consequences. Cholera epidemics swept through the city, killing tens of thousands. At first, people believed in the miasma theory that diseases were spread by foul air. But Dr. John Snow's groundbreaking work in 1854 proved otherwise. He traced a cholera outbreak in Soho to contaminated water from a single pump on Broad Street, revealing that waterborne pathogens were the real culprit. Despite mounting evidence and repeated cholera outbreaks, little action was taken until the summer of 1858. That year, London experienced what became known as the Great Stink. A particularly hot summer intensified the stench from the polluted Thames, making life unbearable for anyone near the river, including members of parliament working at Westminster. The smell was so overpowering that MPs considered abandoning their chambers altogether. This crisis finally forced parliament to act. They allocated three million pounds to address London's sanitation problem once and for all. This is where Joseph Bazalgette enters the story. As chief engineer of the Metropolitan Board of Works, Bazalgette was tasked with designing a modern sewer system for London, a project that would not only solve immediate sanitation issues, but also future-proof the city for generations. Bazalgette's plan was ingenious, yet simple build an extensive underground network of intercepting sewers that would collect waste from across the city and divert it far downstream into the Thames estuary. From there, tidal flows would carry it out to sea. Construction began in 1859 and was completed in 1875, a remarkable feat for its time. The system included six main interceptor sewers stretching over 160 kilometers 100 miles. Four pumping stations, including the iconic Crossness pumping station on the South Bank and Abbey Mills pumping station on the North Bank. These stations used powerful beam engines to lift sewage from low-lying areas into higher-level sewers. Bazalgette's work also included constructing new embankments along large sections of the Thames, such as Victoria Embankment. These embankments concealed sewers beneath them while also creating new roads, public gardens, and even space for underground railway lines. The results were transformative. By diverting waste away from central London, this system significantly reduced cholera outbreaks and other waterborne diseases. The River Thames began to heal, becoming less of a health hazard and more of a lifeline for the city once again. But even Bazalgette couldn't have predicted how much London would grow or how climate change would exacerbate heavy rainfall events. His sewer system was revolutionary for its time, and it worked brilliantly for a while. But here's the thing, 
Basil Gett designed his sewers for a population of 4 million. Today, London is home to more than double that number. And as you can imagine, those Victorian sewers are struggling to keep up. Here's how bad it's gotten. Every time it rains in London, even just a little, the sewers overflow. That's because they're what's called combined sewers, meaning they carry both wastewater from homes and rainwater from streets. When there's too much water for the system to handle, it overflows directly into the Thames. Think of it like a sink. If you pour a gallon of water into a cup, it overflows. That's what happens here. To avoid sewage backing up into homes, the system releases the overflow straight into the Thames. In 2023 alone, this happened 76 times. That's raw sewage in the river for 1,500 hours. On average, 39 million tons of untreated sewage enter the river every year. That's enough to fill about 15 Olympic-sized swimming pools every week. And it's not just gross, it's harmful. The pollution kills fish, damages ecosystems, and makes parts of the river unsafe for humans. Planning for what would become the Thames Tideway Tunnel began back in 2001. Yes, more than two decades ago. It wasn't just engineers making decisions. There were consultations with local communities, environmental groups, and government agencies. In 2014, after years of debate and planning, the project received final approval under something called a Development Consent Order, or DCO, which is basically a special kind of permission needed for major infrastructure projects like this one. One interesting thing about this project is how it's being funded. Instead of relying entirely on public money, an independent company called Basel Get Tunnel Limited was set up to manage construction and financing. Most of the funding comes from private investors, though if you live in London, you might have noticed a small increase in your water bill to help pay for it. All right, let's get into how this thing actually works. Because you're probably wondering, is one tunnel really going to be enough? The short answer is yes. And here's why. The Thames Tideway Tunnel is designed to intercept sewage from 34 overflow points along the river. These are places where waste would normally spill into the Thames during heavy rain. Gravity does most of the work. The tunnel slopes gently downward as it runs from Acton in West London to Abbey Mills in East London, where it connects to an existing system called the Lee Tunnel. From there, everything flows to Becton Sewage Treatment Works, the largest treatment plant in Europe. At each interception point, engineers installed something called a vortex drop shaft, a spiral-shaped tube that controls the speed at which sewage enters the tunnel. Without these, the force of falling wastewater could damage the structure over time. There's also an advanced air management system that prevents foul odors from escaping and ensures air pressure inside the tunnel remains stable. The tunnel itself acts like a giant storage tank, holding up to 1.6 million cubic meters of sewage at any given time. That's roughly equivalent to 600 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Building this thing wasn't easy. It involved some serious engineering muscle. It required six massive tunnel boring machines. Each TBM weighed around 1,200 tons. That's about 200 double-decker buses and could excavate up to 25 meters of tunnel per day. Each machine had a crew of 20 workers monitoring 24-7 operations. The machines were given names like Rachel, Charlotte, and Millicent after prominent women in history, adding a personal touch to this massive undertaking. One of the biggest challenges was London's geology. The city sits on layers of clay, chalk, gravel, and sand, all of which behave differently when excavated. Engineers had to constantly adjust the TBM settings to prevent collapses or flooding. But the TBMs were just part of the puzzle. Over 20 construction sites along the river excavated shafts up to 60 meters deep. One of the most complex was at Chambers Wharf, where a 32-meter wide shaft required 11,000 cubic meters of concrete. Engineers faced groundwater pressure equivalent to 10 double-decker buses pressing on every square meter. To minimize disruption on London's already congested roads, most construction materials were transported by barge along the Thames. 
This eliminated around 400,000 lorry trips and reduced carbon emissions by 10,000 tons. The tunnel stretches 25 kilometers from Acton in West London all the way to Abbey Mills in East London. And at 7.2 meters wide, it's big enough to fit three double-decker buses side by side. Construction started in 2016 and major tunneling wrapped up by 2020. But like any big project, there were challenges along the way. The pandemic caused delays and increased costs, pushing back completion by about two years and bringing total costs from 3.8 to around 5 billion pounds. Fast forward to February 2025. And here we are. The Thames Tideway Tunnel is fully connected. Since partial operations began in late 2024, this system has already captured over 5.5 million cubic meters of sewage, enough to fill more than 2,200 Olympic-sized swimming pools. And now that all 21 connections are complete, it's expected to prevent up to 95% of sewage spills into the Thames. So what does all this mean for London? First off, cleaner water. Once fully operational, the tunnel will reduce sewage spills by about 95%. That means a healthier river ecosystem and fewer risks for people who use or live near the Thames. Water quality monitoring predicts dissolved oxygen levels will rise by 30%, enabling salmon and otters to return to central London. The benefits are already visible. The super sewer is drastically reducing pollution levels in the river, creating a healthier environment for fish, birds, and other wildlife. It's also making recreational activities like rowing and kayaking safer for people who use the river every day. This isn't just about cleaner water. It's about restoring one of London's most important natural assets for future generations. Of course, no project this big comes without its critics. Some argue that even with its impressive capacity, one tunnel might not be enough as climate change brings more extreme weather events. Others question whether alternative solutions like green infrastructure could have achieved similar results at a lower cost. But when you look at comparable projects around the world, like New York City's Deep Tunnel Project or Singapore's Deep Tunnel Sewerage System, it's clear that large-scale solutions like these are often necessary for cities facing similar challenges. Post-2025, Thames Water will operate the system with AI-driven sensors predicting maintenance needs. The 18-month acceptance phase involves rigorous performance checks during varied weather. Success means reducing annual sewage discharges from 39 million tons to just 2 million. So what do you think? Is this 5 billion pounds super sewer worth it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.